Welcome to Brand Lover, honest, real, and lively conversations for flourishing entrepreneurs and budding business owners on a mission to cultivate a heartfelt brand that connects with their purpose-driven mission. My hope is that you walk away feeling inspired and refreshed with a weekly takeaway in your back pocket that you can apply to your life or business. A huge warm welcome to Sandra Chow, who is a creative director and stylist specializing in teaching entrepreneurs how to grow their online brands and increase their profit using visual strategy. I'm so excited to have you here, Sandra, and have a chat. Thank you so much for joining me. No, thank you so much for having me, Rachel. I'm really excited to be here. Well, I know you a little, but I would love to sort of deep dive into who you are and what your, you know, what a day in the life of Sandra looks like. What do you do on a daily basis? What do I do on a daily basis? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's, um, there's a lot actually. A so, lot. <laughs> um, well, in the sense that, and I'm sure you know as well too, Rachel. Um, so I do have three kids. So my yeah. kind of business and life sort of, you know, revolves around shuffling them to school and whatnot. Mm. But um, so day to day, as you already mentioned, I'm a stylist and a creative director. So through my creative agency, I will work with a lot of brands all over the world to create um, to create strategic visual content for their brand. So whether it's for social media, for website, for e-com, um, I do a lot of styling and doing campaign and brand shoots for them. And then I also teach, as you mentioned, I'm through the School of Visual Branding, where I help a lot of entrepreneurs um, grow their brands through visual strategy. So my day-to-day kind of involves um, a bit of both, um, supporting mm-hmm. my students, as well as working with a lot of my clients one-on-one. And then, um, yeah, looking after my kids, which is kind of like, you know, sort of that dream to be able to have that kind of yeah. flexibility to be able to be there for them um, through school and whatnot, because they're still little. So I really yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful blend, isn't it? When you're able to sort of scratch the itch of your professional purpose, but also, you know, be there for your family. I just, I find the same. I can resonate with that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause um, I mean, before I, I actually came from a legal background as well too. So oh, yeah. that I always felt wouldn't really suit yeah. <laughs> the kind of life that I wanted to live. So um, I really love being able to be creative and do what I love, but then also at the same time, have that kind of flexibility to be present and be there for them um, through things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I mean, it's not easy. So you make, you know, you say it in a sentence like that and it just sounds like everything flows and everything's <laughs> fine, but it's a little challenging. So yeah, I, I applaud you because I know how <laughs> tricky it can be. Um, but- Thank you. Yeah, I'm interested to hear about your background Mm -hmm. and sort of how you got to where you are now, like how you got to a place where you're serving your, you know, most aligned clients, you're loving what you're doing, you're helping um, your students, living this this life that is ideal for you in this season, um, as opposed to practicing law. Um, how did that happen? Like, you can't just really jump into that. So how did you make that decision? How did it work? Yeah, I'd just love to know everything. Yeah, no. Um, and I'd like to, I'd like to say that I had a plan and approached it kind of strategically, but as with a lot of things, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so I'm full disclaimer there. But um, yeah, so I was practicing as a lawyer um, in Hong Kong. Um, I practiced for about uh, seven years before I sort of just threw in the towel one day um but it was you know there was a sort of a huge lead up to that though I was you know working really long hours I was just really um I guess struggling a bit like overworked overtired Mm -hmm. um and my health I noticed noticed start to sort of take a bit of a toll and um it kind of coincided with as cliche as it sounds um planning my own wedding (laughs) Mm-hmm. where I actually spent um, a lot of time styling and, and really looking at, you know, um, you know, colors and mood, everything, like the, all those little finer details. And honestly, I, I really, I really loved it. I really fell in love with it. Um, I think it kind of, I don't know, tickled something, you know, my creative juices that I yeah. kind of maybe was craving for, but didn't really realize. Yeah. And so um on the side while I was still working I started you know a little wedding blog in Hong Kong that um because of my connection with Australia I also sort of met a lot of vendors here as well too and kind of just started blogging for a while and um eventually I think I just I just had a really really bad day 
<laughs> at work. That sounds really, really bad. Um, but then I, I finally decided to quit. And it had been something that I'd been thinking about for a long time. Yeah. But, you know, when it's something that you've worked so hard to get to trained a long time for, like, you know, there's so much training involved. It's really hard to just be like, okay, I'm not going to go yeah. do this. I'm going to do something completely different, something that I've never studied. Um, yeah. So it was quite a hard decision to make, but I think I maybe probably needed that kind of spontaneous moment that kind of pushed to make me do it. Otherwise I would never do it. Yeah. But then once I did it, it was like this huge weight lifted and it was like, why didn't I do this sooner? So um, I actually started um, blogging a bit more. And then through my blog, um, I met this wonderful um, floral and events designer who for some reason saw something and we kind of you know had a coffee. She saw something in me and offered me a freelance job. So I learned a lot of styling through her styling um, small corporate events and also wedding events. And then eventually I kind of moved out to do that on my own in weddings and yeah and it kind of all just started from there and over time it sort of pivoted and moved into um, branding and working a lot more with lifestyle brands and um, it's been let me think eight years I think no nine years <gasps> since I, I quit my job so it's, wow. it's been been quite the journey but again I would probably recommend a bit more planning if anyone's <laughs> deciding to do that but um, I think for me it kind of it worked out but it was a lot of uh, a lot of trial and error, I have to say, in the first few years. Yeah. yeah, which is kind of why it led me eventually to want to start the school and teach because I felt like if only I had that kind of resource when I first started, mm. it would have saved me a lot of time and money, I think. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I just, you know, I love that. Like you say, you you sound like you're making an, an excuse or explaining your actions like it was really random, but given all these other things that were going on in the background, like if you're having health problems and it's really stressful and it's inhibiting your lifestyle and that sort of thing, it sounds like the writing was on the wall, but so many women are in that place right now. And all it takes is that 20 minutes of courage to just take the leap, which you just did in a moment. And look at, yeah. look at the repercussions of that. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And I get that a lot from a lot of creatives, especially because I think yeah. a lot of creatives, they might have, you know, their full-time job, but, you know, they love, they have this passion for something that they yeah. absolutely love, but it's really hard to see, I guess it's really hard to see, you know, what it would be like a few years on, you know, when you're yeah. thick in it, it's really hard to see anything but what's happening in front of you. And, you know, we all have bills to pay and everything like that. So it's also hard to, you know, let go of that kind of financial stability as well too, mm. um, to pursue something that seems, uh, you know, very out of reach or, yeah. or impossible. Yeah. So, um, but I do think it's it's totally doable, but, you know, obviously it's not an overnight thing as with most yeah. most things when you're building your business, but um, I highly encourage it if people are on the fence at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and I love that what you're saying. I, re I can relate to that, that, you know, people sort of see the cr creative um, career path as fluffy you know like mm. people do go and do a bachelor of arts at university and it's sort of a joke like <laughs> yeah people laugh at her oh, what are you doing that for kind of thing um it's not, not going to lead you anywhere um yeah. and so, yeah and so you know we're sort of encouraged to follow different career paths but when you know when you really do follow that your heart's desire and create a living from something that you love doing and you're passionate about it's just magical and I think yeah it you is. know for those of, yeah for those living that and like actually walking it out and yet yeah, hard work goes into it as well but it's so um it's just so rewarding and not just financially but just in living I think <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I, I absolutely think that. And I think um, it is it is really hard to see. And I think especially when you're in the creative industry, um, you know, or any kind of small business of any kind, I feel like there's a huge sort of stigma around it. Like, oh, you know, how much are you really going to make? Or exactly. um, is that really a business? And, and to be fair, like even now, I've been doing this for so long, but um, I do also still feel like my friends and family don't always completely get it. Yes. And 
which is why I think finding sort of that community of peers, like who are doing similar things um, as you, or, you know, trying to build similar things to you and build their businesses. It's really important to have those kind of people to rely on because they just get it, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think it is, it is so rewarding though, when you can see what you've built and be able yeah. to wake up doing something that, you know, you're really happy to do and passionate about. Um, and, and that's kind of why you see a lot of um, people who are like, say, in corporate professions who move out into the creative industry um, and things like that, because, you know, they're feeling you know, a lot more fulfilled with what they're doing now, rather than um, what they were doing before, where they're probably still as overworked, but yeah. um, seeing kind of different results and feeling a bit differently about it. Yes, exactly. It's all about how you, how you're feeling about it and the drive behind. Yeah. I think the, the motivations behind what you're doing. You're probably working just as much, maybe especially in the early days. Like it's not going to pass over. Like it takes some dedication and hard work, but it's you know it's 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 different mindset. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So moving on from that, you said you said that you work um, sort of mostly with. Did you say like fashion and? jewelry tell me about tell me I'm not I'm trying I'm not trying to put words in your mouth you tell me what your niche is now like who who do you serve in your one-on-one services and how that came about yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually work with a kind of a wide range of different brands, um, yeah. service-based businesses, as well as um, sort of product e-com businesses. Um, a couple of my key clients are in that sort of lifestyle uh you know, jewelry, sort of clothing, mm -hmm. um, so fashion um, in those kind of areas where, so I do work a lot with them in terms of um, developing like a, you know, a campaign, like a story, like a visual campaign for their brands, um, for them when they're, you know, launching new collections or, mm -hmm. you know, updating their websites or for social media and whatnot. Then on the other hand, I do work with a lot of um, creative businesses still, as well as, I mean, not necessarily creatives, but um, service-based businesses like coaches and whatnot to help them create, uh, you know, visual content for their brands as well. So a lot of it is, um, you know, imagery for their website and whatnot. So I do work with a lot of coaches and graphic designers as well mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, creating imagery for their brands and videos as well too these days. But initially, and I think it was quite, it was really natural. It was kind of a natural sort of pivot as well too, because initially um, I sort of started dabbling in um, the wedding industry, which mm -hmm. sort of led me to meeting a lot of different creatives. So initially mm -hmm. I was serving a lot of creatives like florists, stationers and whatnot, who I still do. But then over time, you know, when you have kids working in the wedding industry is a little bit tricky yeah. <laughs> um, on weekends. And that wasn't something that I really wanted to continue doing. So over time, you know, through strategy, I kind of built out a different portfolio, thinking about the kind of clients I wanted to work with and started putting that out there. And then slowly they started coming in. So I work a lot more in lifestyle now because of that. But it was kind of that gradual change, um, sort of due to personal and as well as lifestyle, I guess, yeah. that I wanted to live. Yeah, so um, so now I do work with service and um, product-based businesses as well. Yeah, so it sounds like your whole business progression has been quite organic and it's sort of just flowed and you've allowed it to. Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite nice. And I think um, a lot of some of these opportunities, like even in the um, working with a lot of product-based businesses, they kind of came through, you know, people that I met probably while I was sort of in that transitional phase and by word of mouth. And so it was mm -hmm. kind of quite natural. And, and I think I really love, um, I just love our industry because of that, you know, yeah. it's just so, I don't know everyone's so supportive of one another and yeah. it kind of really helped me personally to sort of slowly move through, whether it's through, you know, photographer connections that I had or, you know, other creatives that maybe knew someone who was looking for imagery. And then it was, it was all very natural and organic, which, um, which I do feel very, you know, very very um, grateful for yeah absolutely that's lovely so moving on to just a little bit more um businessy strategy chats um I would love to sort of explore the term visual branding with you because I know and you know there are so many different definitions and variations of branding as a concept um, like mm -hmm. you just have to go to Google to just be overwhelmed really um, so I would love to know what the term visual branding means to you um, yeah so absolutely 
there's any I think it's kind of interpreted a bit differently for everybody yeah. to me personally um visual branding is anything that's to do with your brand that's communicated visually so and and I think sometimes um what happens is you know when you hear the word visuals a lot of people immediate, immediately their minds either go to something like oh it's your photos right yeah. but if you really think about you know when it comes to visuals in relation to your brand it's it's absolutely everything it's it's everything um ranging from like your logo to your colors to your fonts how that works together then you know the imagery that you create for how you use it on social media how you use it on your website then it's like your actual website which includes things like the design of the your website you know the font hierarchy on your yeah. website and how that's all pieced together then next is like you know um, your brand collateral, all of that. So to me, visual branding is how you sort of piece together all those different pieces, all those visual pieces that communicate your friend, communicate for your brand mm -hmm. and how it all comes together as a whole to create that kind of visual branding for your business, for your brand. Um, does that kind of yeah, yeah <laughs> in a way yeah I do feel like sometimes it's very obscure a little bit and like you said, because it can be interpreted um in a lot of different ways. it's it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is but for me it's kind of that overall visual picture for your brand yeah um, that's really important to you know create that kind of no like and trust factor in your brand yeah. yeah anything that is a visual representation of your brand like how you're yeah. communicating visually yeah yeah that makes yeah. sense yeah I love it <laughs> um <laughs> so we were sort of chatting before we started recording and you know um there are copywriters who do branding and there are graphic designers that do branding and there are photographers that do branding and um yeah it's 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 tricky as a consumer because everybody has got their own ideas and pushes mm. their own agenda I guess for want of a better phrase and so yeah for you to express it in that way that it's a holistic collective um kind of concept I wholeheartedly mm -hmm. agree with that. And so I love yeah. that. that was your your definition as well. So um, now your obvious talent and what you're known for is visual storytelling um, mm -hmm. and, and using this concept to fuel sales and make profit in your business. Because, I mean, after all, we're running a business. <laughs> it's like we have to sort of, you know, look at all of these different things that can um increase the bottom line I guess so could yeah. you please tell us a little bit about that and how it works yeah I mean I think ultimately you know when it comes to whether you're selling services or products um it's really kind of about communicating for your brand right um you know whether even if it's like copywriting you're always thinking about storytelling for your brand thinking about what to say visual storytelling in a way it's basically like finding the visuals to pair with your copy. Mm -hmm. And um, it's that thing that, you know, makes your photos stand out and a bit more unique to your brand itself and helps you tell whatever story it is you need to tell to sort of communicate um, to your ideal clients and customers to sort of make that sale. So, you know, uh, this is kind of why I love working with um, product-based businesses on visual storytelling, because mm -hmm. a lot of the times when people think about products, they naturally think about like, okay, I need some product photos that I can put on my um, shop, my e-com shop, and then that will sell. But mm -hmm. if you really think about it, if you, those photos are fantastic and, and they're very, very much needed. But if you think about, you know, adding a bit more of a visual storytelling element to it, it's like if you're selling, um, let's just say um, beautiful neutral uh, loungewear or something like that, right? what sort of adds that wow factor for someone or that customer who thinks like, oh yeah, do I want to, you know, is this, is this kind of piece right for me or not? It's actually telling that story of and showing them and communicating to them how it might feel to wear that or how you might incorporate into your daily mm -hmm. life and just stretching it that little bit more so that it really draws people in and it pulls people in and it allows people to think like put themselves in that position and then they're like oh okay I can totally see myself in that and then they kind of go on to purchase mm. um similar to if you were working let's say with a business coach for example typically um what people might I think do is to have a lot of photos of the business coach themselves mm. which I think is fantastic and it's very much needed because you want to know who you're working with you want to know what they're okay. like but 
um, adding that kind of visual storytelling element just adds that little bit like if you think about a business coach, when you go look for a business coach, you're thinking you're probably feeling maybe overwhelmed or you're unsure about something. And then the transformation that people get after coaching, it's usually like, oh, you know, they can finally see the light, you know, they're inspired, they're motivated, you know, all of those things. And if you can translate those kind of feelings into visuals to pair with your copy when you're talking about that transformation, it just adds that extra bit of wow factor. And it could be as simple as, um, you know, perhaps uh, there's photos of, you know, clients who are, are looking, you know, I think the mood is a little bit more, um, you know, they're a little bit down or they're a bit unsure. Mm. And then the next lot of photos towards the end are like photos that you know you see light it's very light filled they're happy you know it's just that little bit of extra storytelling I mm. think adds um a lot more value in terms of what you're communicating and makes people stop to really read what you have to say because I think having really great copy that storytells for your brand is great and all but mm. if you can't make people stop to read it then you know they miss all of that. So visual storytelling um, kind of supports that in a way. And it's basically like translating the stories that you're telling through copy into visuals so that you can really stretch your imagery. And then you have like a lot of content to use for things like Instagram and, and whatnot as well too. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. It makes so much sense. And I love how, you know, you, you, you know, you tie it in with the copy because it all works together, but to, it just makes so much sense to have that that initial attraction and being able to actually connect and relate to what's on offer. Um, yeah, I, lo I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I'm just, just wrapping up now. Um, what's your biggest tip for creating that aesthetically appealing, um, you know, visual direction for storytelling in a brand? For storytelling? Um, I my biggest tip is usually to think about um, the purpose, I think, so mm -hmm. of what you're trying to do. So, for example, if you were, you know, if, let's take a product again as an example. Um, I think sometimes people forget to think about like, okay, what am I wanting to create this for? So if you were creating um, content for a lookbook, for example, um, to send out to um, stores, retail stores and whatnot, it would be very different to you setting out to create a story that's, um, you know, to sell that next collection and talk about what inspired that collection and all the details and all those kinds of things. So I always um, recommend, and this is what I start with, with my clients as well too, like what's, what's the purpose of this shoot? Like, what are we, what are we trying to do here? Are we trying to, you know, promote something or is this more to communicate something else? Because mm -hmm. that kind of helps a lot with, you um, thinking about the kinds of visuals that you start that you need to create and whether there is a story or what kind of story you want to be telling. Um, so I always think start with the purpose, ask yourself, what is this, what's this for? Or who are you trying to yeah. speak to with this? And then create from there, um, which I think is something that gets missed a lot, especially when there's so much noise and you see what other people might be doing and it seems to be working for them. But I think just taking that step to ask what you personally need, like what your mm -hmm. brand actually needs or what your ideal clients and customers need to see for this particular thing, um, it can make a huge difference. Yeah, such an awesome tip. So thank you so much for sharing with us your story and some, um, yeah, just an amazing insight into what you do and how that can can work to, you know, to impact how you are representing your brand. I have some fun rapid fire questions for you now. So... <laughs> Don't be scared. Sure. I'm going to ask you what your favorite is. I'm going to say a word and then it's just the first thing that pops into your mind. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. What's your favorite app? Um, uh, Instagram. Awesome. Time of day? Uh, morning. Exercise? Uh, not really. <laughs> not applicable. <laughs> I love it. N.A. <laughs> all right your favorite habit or ritual um my coffee in the morning mm, love it okay favorite way to relax oh um binging tv shows <laughs> at night I mean that's just all mums all parents 
anything that allows me to switch off and doesn't require yeah. any thinking is like the perfect thing absolutely <laughs> yeah. all right your, and finally your favorite thing about your business oh I personally just really love like all the different people that I've actually met along the way mm-hmm. um and they've been like all over the world which I think is and I think that's why I like Instagram even though I have a bit of a love hate with it like everyone does yeah it's just it's just made it possible I think to connect with people not just in Australia and and that's what I really love about it yeah yeah absolutely awesome well thank you so much again Sandra um where can we find you oh seriously thank you so much Rachel again for giving me this opportunity to share I'm so grateful um to be sharing you know all of this with your audience and if you're listening and and you and you're kind of like you know I want to get more targeted eyes on my brand and sell more to the right people or learn a little bit more about visual storytelling you can head um to the page for my course the branding shoot method which is in the show notes and you can read all about it there and get $50 off as well too um but you know if the course isn't right for you though um please send me a dm on instagram I would love to connect with you there um I always really love to connect with people on dms and then I'll be able to support your business and your goals over there on instagram as well too so those are my invitations (laughs) today and um yeah I just really would really love to get to know um all of your audience and all your all your listeners as well too so yeah so sweet and you're so right like even you're such a beautiful example of how collaborations and community can help to grow a brand um, in a really aligned way so thanks for sharing that um is it just sandra chow on instagram we do we'll, um, we'll have a link in the show yeah. notes but it's, uh, sandra chow design awesome okay thanks yeah. so much lovely thank you so much for listening if you loved this week's episode of brand lover Take a screenshot of wherever you're listening and share your biggest takeaway on Instagram or Facebook. And don't forget to tag me. I'd love to give you a shout out and thank you personally. Also, feel free to subscribe and leave a review to help the Brand Lover podcast reach more hard aligned entrepreneurs just like yourself. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.